OK, so if you go on to either Autograph, Desmos, or GeoGebra, or some other graphing package, and you try and graph y is equal to, I don't know, uh, 8 cos x uh, plus 3 sine x, for example, then what you should find is that you get some form of sinusoidal graph, so one that looks like a sine or cosine curve, where it hasn't been stretched parallel to the x-axis in any way, okay? So it's still got a period of 2 pi, or 360 degrees, okay? But it has been stretched parallel to the y-axis, so it's this one's certainly not going th between minus 1 and 1 anymore, okay? Um, and there's also some form of translation gone on. Now, we know that sine is just a translation of cosine and vice versa, okay? So what you could do is, well, can we write this in some form where we take account of the stretch parallel to the y-axis, okay, some multiplier of either cos or sine. Now the theta, because it's not the, there's no stretch parallel to the x-axis, so it'll still be, well, not theta, but x rather, it'll still be a singular x. It's not 2x or 3x or x over 5 or anything. So there's no stretch parallel to the x-axis, but there has been a translation occurred, okay? So either we're going to the right or to the left, okay, by an amount of alpha. And so... We should be able to write, now it doesn't matter what numbers you put there, it could be a million and uh, minus 800 if you wanted to, it doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is that if we've got this form of a cos theta plus b sine theta, we should be able to write it in either the form r cos theta plus or minus alpha or r sine theta plus or minus alpha where the plus minus alpha is taking account, well, it could be a translation to the left or to the right, okay? So, this is true, and this will allow us to solve um, some particular types of trigonometric equation. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to show that this is true, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with just one of these. Now, you could try them all out yourself, if you like, okay, to show that they all can be written in this format, okay? Well, I can get a specific A, I can find uh, what this R and alpha would be. So, what I'm going to run with is I'm going to use R sine theta plus alpha. So, I'm going to say that A cos theta plus B sine theta can be written as r sine theta plus alpha. Okay, I'm just going to go through this one version of it. So if we start with the right-hand side, r sine theta plus alpha. So starting with the right-hand side, if I rewrite this, I can write this using my compound angle formula. So that's r lots of sine theta cos alpha. And because that's plus, this will be plus. Cos theta sine alpha. Now, if I expand the bracket out, then we've got, and bring the alphas to the front, r cos alpha sine theta. I'm, I'm going to move to equal signs because I'm just gonna I'm gonna forget otherwise. So I'm gonna bring the cos alpha to the front. R cos alpha sine theta plus R cos uh, sorry R sine alpha. Oh dear. Not doing too well am I? Cos theta. R sine alpha cos theta, right? So what we've now got is something that actually looks like my original bit on the left-hand side here, because now what I can say is that what's in front of the sine theta here must be what's inside 
uh, what's in front of the sine theta here. So I can say that B is R cos alpha. And what is in front of the cos theta here must be what's in front of the cos theta here. So A is R sine alpha. It's like comparing coefficients, effectively. So now what you can do is you could rearrange both of these to get cos alpha is B over R and sine alpha is A over R. OK. Now, you could either put both of these into sine squared plus cos squared is 1. Or you could think about drawing a right angle triangle here and thinking, well, if that's my angle alpha, then B over R must be adjacent over hypotenuse. A over R must be opposite over hypotenuse. And so R squared must be A squared plus B squared. Now, as R must be a length here, that means that R is the square root of A squared plus B squared. Now, what we can also do is we can say, well, if that's equation 1 and that's equation 2, I could do equation 2 divided by equation 1 and say that A over B must be equal to R sine alpha over R cos alpha. Now, the R's here will cancel. Sine alpha over cos alpha is tan alpha. So that means that alpha must be the inverse tan, or arc tan, of A over B. So, this is how it works. So, A cos theta plus B sine theta is R sine theta plus alpha, where R is the square root of A squared plus B squared, and alpha is the inverse tan of A over B. Now, what you can do is you can memorise these two pieces, if you like, OK, and then run with that. Personally, that's not my preferred route, mainly because um, these formulas can be subtly different depending on whether you're using cosine or sine, or if that alpha is plus or minus, OK? So I'm a little wary to just uh, remembering and memorising this shortcut straight off the cuff, OK? Personally, I prefer to go through the compound angle formula to make sure that I'm setting up the correct equations to then solve simultaneously, as we will see in the uh, next couple of videos.